designed this adorable little wrist wallet to be worn when you don't feel like carrying a purse. It's a fashionable yet functional way to run errands while keeping your hands free. And the best part about this piece is it's made seamlessly, which means no sewing. I'm excited to share with you how it's made today. Stay tuned. For a full supply list, see the description box below. To begin, you will need a credit card or a gift card, and you will want to trace around it and add three centimeters to the top. We're going to use that extra three centimeters for a flap. Mine measured exactly 11 centimeters. I'm using centimeters here because it's better for small projects like this. Once you've traced it out, cut it out. We are going to use it for a template. Then once you have your template, string all of your 25 beads onto your strand of yarn, and then make a chain that is the length of your template. Then you're going to add one chain. Mine was exactly 23 chains. Now you're going to turn and put two single crochet in the second chain from your hook. Now you're just going to place one single crochet in every stitch to the end. Once you're at the end, you will chain one and turn. Place one single crochet in every stitch until the last stitch. Once you get to the last stitch, you're going to increase. You're going to put two single crochet in that last stitch. Now you will chain one and turn. Place two more single crochet at the beginning of this row. We are increasing on this side only. Now you will place one single crochet in every stitch to the end of this row. At the end of the row, you will chain one and turn. Now you will place one single crochet in each stitch until you reach the last stitch. When you're at the last stitch, you're going to increase again. So place two single crochet in that last stitch. You will see an edge is being formed here. Chain one and turn. Place two single crochet in the first stitch. Now place one single crochet in every stitch to the end of this row. Once you're at the end, you will chain one and turn. Place one single crochet in each stitch to the end of this row. At this point, your piece should look like this. Grab your template and fold it in half lengthwise. Take your piece and lay it on top. It should be about half of that. Now it is time to decrease. We are going to go the opposite direction. But since this is the center, we are not going to increase or decrease on this row. This is row six for me. So now we're going to chain one and turn. Now we begin our decrease. So in the first two stitches, you are going to single crochet two together. Now you will place one single crochet in the following stitch and in each stitch all the way to the end. At the end, you will chain one and turn, and you will place one single crochet in each stitch until you reach the last two stitches. When you're at the last two stitches, you will do a decrease. So single crochet two together over the last two stitches of this row. Chain one and turn. We will decrease again over the first two stitches of this row. Now 
Now you will place one single crochet in each stitch all the way to the end of this row. At the end of this row, you will chain one and turn. Now you will place one single crochet in each stitch until you reach the last two stitches. When you've reached the last two stitches, you will single crochet decrease. Chain one and turn. This is our last row. Single crochet decrease over the first two stitches. Now you will single crochet in every stitch until the end of this row. Now your piece should look just like this. Grab your template and double check the size. And now we are going to single crochet an edging row all the way around your piece. So chain one and turn so that you are working at the bottom of your 11 rows. Place one single crochet in each row to the end. At the end of this, you should have 11 single crochet. Now we're going to continue in the round, going up the side. Chain one and turn. And you're going to place one single crochet in the same stitch as your last single crochet. Now you're going to place one single crochet in each stitch until you reach the first point of the triangular flap. I'm crocheting over the beginning tail so that I can weave it in later. Go all the way till you reach that corner. When you reach that corner, we are going to make a pico stitch. That is just a chain three, turn, and place a single crochet in the third chain from your hook. Since this is a corner, we're going to put one more single crochet in the same stitch. Now you're going to put one single crochet in the next two rows. Make a pico stitch. There will be three single crochet between each pico. Place one single crochet in the next three rows. On the third single crochet, you will be at the very top of your piece. This is where we will place our buttonhole. To create the buttonhole, we are just going to chain four if you have a 10 millimeter bead or three if you have an eight millimeter bead and place a single crochet in the same stitch. That created your buttonhole. Now you will place one single crochet in the next two rows. Place a pico stitch. Place one single crochet in the next three rows. Now we're going to place a pie coat. You'll place a single crochet in the same stitch and one single crochet in every stitch all the way to the end. This is how your piece should look. Once you reach the end, you will slip stitch into the first single crochet you made. Chain one 
and we are going to be working in the back loop only. You will place one single crochet in the back loop only of the bottom 11 single crochet. Now, we are going to be working up the side single crochet of our edging round. Our pocket will be on the wrong side of our piece, so we are going to be stitching into the back loop only of this side. So now we're going to skip the chain one and slip stitch into the back loop only of the first single crochet, the second single crochet, and we are going to turn our work. You are not going to chain, but you are simply going to begin single crochets across those 11 stitches in a row. Turn your piece the other direction. We are going to be working in the front loop only of these single crochet. Think of it more of the inner loops. We are creating an edging or a ribbing on the outside. So slip stitch into the first and second front loop only of those side single crochet. Now you should notice that your pocket is already starting to form. This is how it should look. In order for your rows to come out evenly at the top, we have two stitches over there and two stitches over here, but we're going up a row, so this is the only place where you will slip stitch one more time into the side. Now we should be even. Turn your work and place one single crochet in every stitch to the end of this row. Now, you will slip stitch into the next inner loop and the next inner loop. And you will turn your work. You will see this ribbing here is starting to form nicely. Place one single crochet in every single crochet to the end of this row. You will never have more than 11 single crochet, or if you made your pocket bigger, you will never have more than the amount of rows that your back panel consists of. Now you will slip stitch into the next two single crochet in the inner loop. Technically this is the front loop only of those single crochet. Now you will turn your work and continue making single crochet in every stitch across. slip stitch into the back loop only or the inner loop of the next two single crochet. This is what your pocket should look like. You should put a gift card in it to see if it fits okay. We are going to continue the pocket rows until we reach row 13. At row 14 we're going to add a button. So just keep repeating these rows all the way up your pocket until you reach row 14. So that's just single crocheting across each row and then slip stitching up two. Here I am at row 13 completed. My gift card fits in very nicely. When you fold it over you can see that this is the perfect place to add a button. I'm making one single crochet in the first five stitches of row 14.
On the sixth single crochet, I'm going to place my bead. This will act as a button. So you just place the bead as close to the hook as you can and complete your single crochet as usual. Then I will single crochet in the next five stitches. Finish the row as you have been all the other rows. I will continue doing the rows just like you were before you reached the button. Put one single crochet all the way across, slip stitch up two along the side. Until your pocket is completely covering your gift card. That will be about four or five more rows. Here I am completed. I decided to do 19 rows. To me, that's the perfect size, and plus, the right side is facing outside. I like that. So I'm going to close my pocket and turn. Now we are going to be working in the remaining loops of our ribbing that we did. So we're going to be going back and forth across in rows, making chains and beaded chains. So begin by slip stitching in the first two remaining loops down the side. Chain 24. So now you will want to see, I did two stitches down from where the pocket ends. But I'm also going to count from the bottom to make sure. I'm going to count up and see exactly how many stitches up I am on this side, which is 17. And so I'm going to go to the other side and count 17 of those loops up. You want to be very careful that you are slip stitching into the same loop on the opposite side. Now you will slip stitch into the next two remaining loops. Turn your work and chain three. Now you will want to grab six of your beads and bring them closer to where you are working. Place a bead on the fourth stitch. Now you will chain three and place a bead. Chain three. Place a bead. Chain three. Place a bead. You will repeat this until you have six beads on your chain. Here I have six beads, so I'm going to end this row with three chains, and then I'm going to go to the opposite side. Now I know that I slip stitch two on this other side, but technically that's only one space in between. So I'm going to go down two stitches from the last one and slip stitch. Now I'm going to slip stitch in the next two remaining loops. And I'm going to do another chain row. So for me, that's 24. Now you will skip one and slip stitch into the next one. At this point, I would place a stitch marker in there and try it on to make sure that it goes over your hand. 
you will want it to fit fairly snug, so just make sure that it'll go over it. To me, one finger is perfect. Make sure that it is wide enough to go over your fist. If you have to, measure across your four knuckles. Now I'm going to continue this process. The next row will be a beaded row, and then after that will be a chained row. I'm going to continue alternating these rows until I get to the end, and I'm going to end on a chain row. You should have four rows of six beads. Here I am at the end. I'm slip stitching into the last two. And now you will fasten off. This is my favorite part of the whole project, only having two ends to weave in. Now I'm going to try it on and show you how it fits. Fits really snug. I'm able to get one finger in there and that's the way I like it to fit. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.